Hey everybody, I hope you are all having a good Memorial Day weekend. It is so cool to see you guys. Well, there's no one here yet, but maybe everyone's having hamburgers and hot dogs and noodle salad, as Jack Nicholson said in the movie, As Good As It Gets. So, so far, nobody's here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, Steve, you're the first one. How are you, mate? Good to see you. So glad you made it, sir. Yeah, I was like wondering if I was going to be the only one here. So how you feeling, Steve? Better? Hope you're feeling better, sir. And let's see here. We are going to... We have the pastel pencils here. And we have Katya. And we're just going to come in here and start to... Um, refine some of the shadows she's looking a bit hard-edged hey colette how you doing it's so cool you're here how are you so even today i went ahead and did a little work started uh softening up her face a little bit stuff like that so that was fun i was doing that getting her situated so i'm gonna start using some of these foam triangles as opposed to the uh those little peanuts hey mr john how you doing good to see you how you feeling my friend i'm so glad you're here and on the road to recovery that makes me feel great and oh so and and steve is feeling a little rough oh man so i hope you're feeling i hope you get to feel better uh as time goes on sir and so I'm glad you're here and thank you for coming even when you're not feeling too well. That means a lot to me. So here we are. So uh, we are going to jump right into it. So, oh, John's getting some rest and that's really fantastic. That's good to see, you know, rest is everything, right? So I got to move my camera because it's a little off skew. So let's see. Because she's at an angle. So I just want to make sure. If she's straight with the camera. She's straight with you guys. I have a little ball. What is that? Little boy ball joint here. On my tripod. I want to make sure I'm tightening it. There we go. That's much better. So. Great. So I want to concentrate on the... Uh, oh, thank you, Colette. Colette says she's gorgeous. I appreciate that. And so... Oh, let's go ahead and... Let me get her in pure ref here. There's Katya. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to start working on her sternocleidomastoid muscle right here. And I wanted to start using these little foam triangles here. And I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. I don't want it too harsh, you know. We've got to make sure that, you know, we're very gentle and everything like that. And make sure that our lines are graceful, right? That's an important consideration when painting the portrait, especially the female portrait. And so I'm softening this up with the intent to come in in just a little bit and kind of fix this up a little bit. So now I'm going to come in with a lighter color. And this one is a interesting color. It's a very light gray. But it works against this uh, kind of uh, very warm yellow. Kind of calms it down, as you can see. And now what I'll do is very softly work on this edge. Actually, I do like that yellow that we've been using. It's a very light yellow, and I have to find it. Let's see, where is that? I use it so much, it might even be, you know, somewhere else. Let's see. 
not here. Let me check over here on this side. So I'm going to keep looking. If I can't find it in the pastel pencils, then what I'll do is I'll go into regular pastels. But I know it should be here. Let's see. Remember, if you can't find it, it's inevitably under something. So that's usually the case. But there's always one, more than one way to handle this. So what I'll do is I'll come in with a white here. And I'll just add color afterwards. So there's more than one way to handle this. So you can see I can glaze over a white here. You'll do the same thing with pastels. You definitely can layer, you know. Oh, John's getting better each day. That's so cool. That is so great to hear. You're a tough guy, so I know you're going to be okay. But I'm glad you're listening to the doctors. That's not always an easy thing. And you see how I'm just glazing in that color, that lighter, lighter value. So my main goal was to soften up this, this sternocleidomastoid muscle. So now we have to come in with an orangey color. Let's see if this is too dark. Yeah, it is too dark. So I'm going to come in with this kind of fleshy orangey color right here. And I'm just going to kind of feather that. So the real goal is to soften. So someone might say, well, Tim, why don't you just go ahead and blend it? Because blending is, uh, is a good thing to do, but only after you really identify the shapes. If we get blend happy, then we're not identifying the state sh the, sh the shape, and we're just blending. So we can miss a lot with doing it that way. So how's everyone doing with the Memorial Day weekend here in the States? Anyone have barbecues and noodle salad and all that good stuff. See, my goal is to really soften up that sternocleidomastoid. And you can see how thicker it gets because it can't stay thin the whole way up. And so it gets a little bit thicker up here. So I have to make sure that I take note of that. Otherwise, it'll look spindly, and we don't want that. And then I can glaze some, some color over that, maybe some, some light yellow over this. And then we can come in with a orangey color here. So it's just like an airbrush, the same thing is going on, is that we're modeling the forms, right? So the difference is we don't have to worry about anything, any kind of blue shift. So I can come in and pretty much just attack whatever dark color with a light, no problem whatsoever. So one of the many advantages in working in pastel from other, other mediums. So if you were thinking of working in pastel, this should really, really make up your mind because what you can do in pastel, you can't do in other mediums, including airbrush. Now, I, I don't think that one should stop airbrushing. I just think uh, pastel is, is really, will really help your airbrushing and your pastel will help your, your, air, your pastel will help your airbrush and your airbrush will help your pastel. And you see how I can just glaze over that white as if it, the white was only there 
to kind of lay the groundwork value wise for the color that comes on top. And then after, once you establish these values and these shapes, then you can come in and start blending, but only then. But you'll notice here that there are some lights in the shadows, and I'll show you how to do that. So, so in this shadow area, there's some light here. So first, I'm just going to light the value up with white, and then I can come in with this kind of uh, dark, fleshy color and I can glaze over that. And then you can see that we're not just doing these, these shapes, but there's lights in the darks and darks in the lights and everything. Brad, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. How's everything, my friend? So glad you made it. And we'll just pull this. Actually, I have to stay focus so I want to actually put a little more light in there so let's go ahead and make this happen It's great because with this method, you're actually, you're going backwards. You can go backwards and forwards as far as working with value and color, which is really great in pastel. And once you, you know, worked in, let's say, airbrush, where you have to make sure you worry about blue shift and everything like that, this is just like such a pleasure, such a pleasure to work with. So... I'm going to come in with one of these packing peanuts here. And now we can start doing a little bit of blending. Just tap that. Hey, Raul, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Oh, so Steve says he really likes the look of pastels. Can't wait to start using them. Yes, definitely. We'll go over them in our classes. Definitely, my friend. And Raul says he loves pastel, but the only thing that bothers him is that it can be served so easily and fixative changes the color. Well, good question. So, uh, hey, hey, Zeus, how you doing? Great to see you. All the way from Chai Town. So great. I'm so glad you're here. So... With pastel, uh, once you go ahead and uh, first you have to work with a good surface. And the only reason why you would ever use fixative in case, let's say, the, the surface gets overloaded. In the event that the surface gets overloaded, then you would use fixative to give you another layer so you can work on. But I challenge you to uh, try, try one of uh, my my boards and as uh, so I feel in my board which I use uh, a mixture of marble dust and and gesso and water and actually will allow you to have unlimited layers of pastel so you would be no need for fixative and then the other question is well pastels are so malleable right they're you know you can still smudge them but once you frame them either with a mat and glass or straight under glass they will last and stay as fresh and beautiful as the day you painted them i have pastels that are like 30 years old that frame still looks as fresh as the day i painted it and they are less likely to fade because it's pure pigment they're also less likely they won't crack like paint would. Let's say you're painting on, let's say Raul, you're painting on, on canvas and you're doing it in oils. Well, that's great, but over time as the temperature gets cold and hot, the 
the uh, canvas will grow and shrink. As that happens, the paint stays the same, and then the paint starts to crack over periods of time. So pastel is actually probably the most stable painting medium you could possibly have archivally. So Brad, oh, so your shoulder's hurting. Sorry to hear that, my friend. But uh, Raul, I know you, uh, the way you work, I know you'll do amazing things with pastel. So I'm just bringing in some beautiful life into these colors here, moving back and forth. Color-wise, pastel has to be the most intuitive of mediums, without a doubt. And then she has this cute little cleft here. I'm going to put that in. Ah, oh, thanks, Raul. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really enjoying these Friday, uh, I mean, these sat Saturday night pastel sessions and kind of uh, showcases something that I do and I really haven't showcased it in a while. But more importantly, share it with you guys and you all can see just, you know, that you, you can paint these pictures as well. You could work in pastels. And if you know how to airbrush, you definitely can do pastel and excel at it. And that's my goal is for you all to excel at this really amazing medium to explore color in a way is just fantastic. Oh, thanks. Jesus says she's looking good. Hair and everything is coming along. Thank you. And Brad says, don't forget, forget to hit that smash button, uh, smash that like button. I don't know if there is a smash button. So, yeah, thank you, my friend. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Yeah, Chicago is great. Hey, how you doing? Nameless subscriber, good to see you. So glad you made it, sir. gonna so you can go ahead with pastel and you know add beautiful layers of of value but still do that while doing color okay so remember I have this white and I could go ahead and infuse light into areas now isn't that amazing when you think about it that you have the ability to infuse light in a way that that you couldn't do in airbrush and oils and everything like that. So that's exciting. That's one of the exciting elements of this medium. Smash it like Mario Brothers. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. I appreciate that. Let's work on her eye there. Okay. And I'll zoom in with my reference here. So we are on the same page. Now, you'll notice that the negative space in an eye is so important. And you'll see that, you know, how the eye we see more of it on the top than I had it. See that? That little bit of a difference can change her expression. And with this gray, I can lighten up these values here.
Remember, more pressure, more pastel. Less pressure, less pastel. Ah, sorry about the, the shoulder and uh, shoulder pains and everything. That's that's horrible. And let's see. Make sure I'm not putting things I don't see, right? We got to make sure of that. Little bit of the translucency of the iris here. Let's make that happen. See how just a little bit of pressure I can show off the translucency. We lighten it. See this little bit of translucency right here? I can get that. Yes, so definitely take care of you take care of ourselves when we're young and when we get older. That's so important. This will be just like pumping the trigger in airbrush, right? See how I'm doing that? That's gonna add tone, but it's also going to create skin texture. Wow, a lot of heavy field work. That'll do it. There we go. And let's zoom out. See if that changed her expression. It really did. It kind of changed her expression a little more. Let's make... There we go. All right, so I do see that there is this little shadow right here and I like it but I think there's a little more light in that shadow so I'm just going to infuse some of the white to add more light and we'll bring it on over here and now we can add on some of the darker parts of that shadow but make sure that the shadow really is the same light just with less intensity or a little bit uh, diminished and we'll come in here with this gray because we definitely have to separate the shadow from the hair right the shadow and the hair are separate they're not the same. So we have to make that distinction. There we go. And then I can come in with this uh, very beautiful dark here. This is 1121-280 with the pit pastel. And we just have to establish the dark of the hair and make sure that those borders are are established hey Rick how you doing great to see you so the pastels I'm using right now uh, are the uh, pit pastel pencils by Faber Castell and also I am using the credit color pastels uh, pastel pencils uh, they're by credit color and uh, so I'm really just using those two sets right now just throughout this whole painting just to uh, basically uh, let you guys know that you don't have to go ahead and buy thousands of dollars worth of pastel to get started that you can get started with just maybe a hundred dollars worth of pastels so 
So that's good to know, you know, and it's a great medium. You'll really love it. So it looks like I have some black here and then I'll go over to black. So you can do a lot of glazing with pastels, which is really great. Over here, it's much lighter. So let's do that infusion. But I want to infuse that since it's such a dark. Maybe I could use a gray on that or even a. No, I would say a gray. So this is going to be, uh, let's give it a try, 1121-255. So I'm going to infuse some of this shadow here with a lighter color. See how I can do that. Maybe even come in with that lighter gray because it seems like that dark gray just isn't cutting it. Put this over here. You know, with this, there's really no reason to have the magnets when you're working in pastel. So let's pastel it on a board. So let's get rid of these magnets they're just in the way they're great when working in pest uh working in airbrush but they're a hassle when working in pastel and boards so we'll move them aside and we'll bring back our art there we go perfect get this cursor out of the way great okay so thing we're doing is we're lightening up that this shadow here so we're going to glaze it, and then we're going to go over it. If I lighten it a value, you might be able to see it a little clear, more clear what I'm doing. Good movie for you guys to catch if you get a chance uh, by Woody Allen, uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which is a good movie. So that's a good Memorial Day weekend movie to watch if you get a chance to see it. Has anyone seen that movie out there? And now what I'll do is I'll just lightly blend this in and we're going to achieve the translucency that has been eluding us before. And so now it's a pretty dead color. So now we have to bring some life into it. Put some of this in here. Come over here. And this, right along her chin here, is a little overzealous with this shadow. So I'm going to calm this down. See this shadow underneath her chin here? I'm going to soften that up. I'm going to make her elegant as she is. Now the thing is, just like in anything, if I'm doing an airbrush or pastel, a, a pencil, regardless of the medium, focus is everything. 
Focus is so important. So sleep is so important when you're healing, right, sir? So, so glad to hear that. So you can see as I go ahead and see how I made the uh, border on her top lip too, too fat. And as I went ahead and trimmed that, now her, her lip doesn't look too small. So, but the thing is I couldn't see that at that point. So that's why I'm not looking for any kind of likeness, right? That's not what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna let it cook and that's important. All right, so we do have a little bit of shadow uh, from the lip to the her teeth. So the first thing I want to do is establish the shadow on her lips. But I got to be weary that I don't go too dark. So we're just going to very lightly, light pressure. So I am going to start offering uh, pastel, uh, pastel painting workshops for those who are not in the mentorship program. If you want to have like a four day intense pastel workshop, let me know. That's something that I will be offering in the future. If that works for you. I'm shaping her teeth a little bit more now. And I'm also going to shape the lights in her lips. Okay. That might have been too dark. So let's see if I have a lighter color. And yeah, so definitely, John, it might be something that the pastel people might be uh, more used to having a workshop where it would be more of an intense three day or a four day workshop going over the portrait or, you know. Uh, now being a signature member of the Pastel Society of America, <coughs> it is a really good opportunity to uh, get a chance to do a workshop with me. Of course, I really prefer that the student would take the uh, mentorship program but some people might like a, a three or four day workshop and that would be online working together uh, with several students and working on a portrait. So that's something I think would be very cool. Okay. Back to those lips.
right, so now we have a little bit of an orangey, a light orangey kind of cast shadow from the lips onto the teeth there. Let's see if I can show you up close. Ever so slight. And now we have the line in between our two T's here. And don't try and do it all in one shot, right? Just shape it. Shape the light. It's so much easier than any other medium out there. Harvey Dinnerstein said that pastels is like an extension of his fingertips. And he was right. He is right. And let's see... Nameless says, Tim, I would take your program if I could afford it and had a schedule for it. I understand, definitely, Nameless. But one day you will be, and I'll gladly accept you and, uh, you know, be great to work with you. Raul says, Tim, how do you feel about mixing mediums? I tend to use airbrush acrylic, airbrush markers, colored pencils, sometimes one piece. Uh, no, I, I am not a purist by any way. Uh, I, they... I basically will do anything to make a good painting and make a good painting better. So if I have to, like yourself, use marker, uh, use uh, pencil, you know, anything, scratching techniques, erasing techniques, whatever makes it better. I just don't go overboard with any of those techniques, but definitely, even if I have to, like, uh, dip the model's toe in some some white paint and have her walk across the uh, painting. I would do that to make it better. So it really is important to um, always, always not be a purist. Uh, there's really no, uh, there's no advantage to someone saying, well, I did it all in airbrush or whatever. Big deal. The main thing, right, Raul, is how does it look? Does it look great? then that's what's important. Now, as long as, you know, you stay true to your ideals, like what do you feel is too far, right? What do you feel is for your own artistic things, right? That's, you're the only one that should you should answer to when it comes to that. Nobody else. No, uh, don't know it, but I bet my I bet my uh, mentorship program kicks the butt of the evolve. Uh, what is it called? The evolve evolve artist program. I bet I kick the butt, and I bet my my students are much better than their students because I mean we got it going on over here, and our you know so definitely. So let's see, is this going to keep coming over here? Thanks, John. John said hit that like button. So that's cool. I appreciate that. And let's zoom out and see how she's looking. So not bad. I think she's... Uh, coming to life a little bit more and that's a good thing and we'll just e infuse more life into this
if ever you see something that is too hard edged or anything like that or stands out, then you address it and take care of it, right? So that's something to always, always be on the lookout for. All right, so now we can come in with some of those packing peanuts. Let me go get some. Where are they? I guess I had a whole bunch of them. Here we go. And remember, these packing peanuts are very inexpensive, so get like a year supply for like eight dollars or something like that which is incredible so now we can just come over here and just easily start working those edges out yeah you know it's uh, really important to you know always try and find Breakout of tradition is great as a ground, right? But always try and find new ground, right? Always strike out on your own. Find new ways of doing it that perhaps they didn't, they didn't, uh, the old masters didn't go ahead and do it because maybe they didn't have the technology or the perspective that you have, right? So, or I don't have the perspective that you have. So it's important to always try and find your own path. But I think like the, the old masters are our guides, right? I think that's pretty much how I feel. Right, so Jesus has a good point. If you stick to one way, you're going to stay that way. And uh, the chances of having breakthroughs really, really diminish. So definitely a good point there, Jesus. Definitely. Let's infuse some life into these shadows here. Jesus broke the cycle. <laughs> Very cool. So think of light as a bunch of Super Bowls. Remember those Super Bowls where you, you throw it and it bounces all over the place? So think of holding a handful of those Super Bowls and you're in a small room and you just throw those Super Bowls like against the wall and you'll see they start bouncing in all different directions. That's what light is doing. So that's why when you see over here, even though it's a shadow, that there's light in there. Because the fact is that, like those Super Bowls, the light is bouncing in all those different directions. There we go. Oh, I love this part right here. So I'm actually starting to get a little bit of more of her personality here so now I can come in with a darker lip color and remember there's no such thing as lip color there's all the lip color of that particular painting at that particular moment that she was having this photograph taken Yes, it's very important to take it easy on yourself, right? Don't be hard on yourself. We got enough people being hard on ourselves for us to add to it, right, my friend? You don't need that. 
just refining, refining as I go. And I can see that the lip actually extends past the tooth right here. So I made some prints today, which is pretty exciting of a painting I did a while ago. This painting I think I did last, not the January, but the January before then. This is uh, uh, a model that I met. Uh, she actually lives in Milan, so I was able to do these. If anyone's interested in one of these prints, they're on aluminum, which is really great. And they're five by seven, and I'm selling them for $29 on the website if anyone's interested. But you can see, look at this shine, the shine on that. Isn't that beautiful? So I just did three of them today. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate that. Thank you. So you see, you know, as an artist, it's important to, you know, try different mediums because you can say different things in slightly different ways, you know, with a different medium, which is great. Anything that's going to help you express yourself is, is fantastic. So doing different mediums is really a plus. Thanks, Raul. I appreciate that. Thank you, Colette. Yeah, that was, that was such a fun painting. Actually, it wasn't all that fun at times because I was working on all the different squares in the uh, work there. You see that, you know, all of this, all of this going on in there, that was really difficult. Uh, let me see if I could focus and just show you. Oh my God, it drove me crazy. Painting, and that's an airbrush. The original's an airbrush in India ink on the uh, color line paper, and that's with the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Ah, thank you, uh, Steve. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So it's great that I have the live streams, uh, keeping the airbrush live streams on Wednesday nights. And then on Saturday, we're going to have the pastel live stream and really hopefully inspire you in the black and white and how important that is and also in the color and how exciting that is. But you can't do one without the other. So you have to make sure, you know, those who just do color work and they don't do black and white, they're really doing their art a disservice because working in black and white will help your color. But working in color won't help your black and white. Interesting. Think about that. Isn't that interesting? So if you want your paintings, your color paintings to get better, then you have to work in black and white. Fascinating. Now I'm just going to try and get some of these uh, sort of the way the way that light kind of hits lips it's almost it almost goes through because the lips are very thin as far as the skin so you can almost see the light going through the lips that's why you get a special look when you see lips you know as next to let's say skin Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if we could 
Now, I'll show you how to do this. So let's say you want to bring some life into that air, right? You have the darks, you have the midtones, and now you want to put in some of those lights. But you don't want to uh, just go straight in with that with the color. But what you can do is you can start it with white and then glaze over that white. And I'll show you how cool this looks. Okay, so now we need a kind of uh, golden color. Maybe a little more orange, I think. Just glaze over that white. See that? And then we can come in with that kind of this dark color right here. 1122-176. Then we can come in with the black and really kind of set those uh, hairs into as they go forward and then back. So now I'm just going to look for black. I know it was here. I just have to locate it. Let's see. Here it is. Okay, great. And then we could do the same thing, but let's uh, come out of that with a little bit of a Let's try this here. And then we can come back in with the white and really hit the highlights of those hair. Thanks, Jesus. I appreciate that. Um, Nameless said, I uh, heard that lips are uh, intact, transparent-ish. That's why they look red-pink. You're actually looking at the blood. Yes, you really are. It really is. It's so transparent, right? So definitely in agreement with you there, sir. And let's continue some of this lighter color over here with her hair. Again, what we can do is we could start the glazing process with the white and then glaze over that. And you see how we can 
You know, hair, like anything else, just like when we work with hair when we're doing an airbrush, it's all just sticking with it, painting the helmet first, then the individual hairs. But it's a little more complicated because we're working in color. And then we can repeat this process as we go. First putting in the white, then glazing in the color. And isn't that a great technique, right? Kind of uh, demystifies, you know, working in color. Because as always, value in drawing and edges, that's the most important thing. Ah, thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So we are, we are getting close. Thank you, Jesus. We are getting close to the end of the live stream. So uh, I hope it's been informative and I hope uh, you'll come back. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe because I will be doing a lot more pastel painting and a lot more airbrush and also talking about other things that help us as artists, you know, such as entering art contests and uh, exhibiting your work, how to photograph your work, all these different things I know that, you know, you'll need in the future. So that's um, making a little bit of a pivot in the, uh, in, the, in the channel. Oh, thank you, John. And oh, thank you, Raul. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. See, as I went ahead and fixed this because it was too equidistant, you want to really guard against your any like hair or anything like that being equidistant. You have to keep it organic. And even me, you've seen how I could just easily get caught up in... Uh, you know, in my own kind of human mind, trying to make everything equidistant in the same size, right? You don't want that. So, uh, take care, uh, Mr. Steve. Always great. Hope to see you in class tomorrow. And uh, Colette, thank you so much. And Raul and John, and, and great to see you, nameless subscriber. Uh, you guys are all great. And so that is fantastic. Hey, Zeus, I'm glad you, you've seen the live stream from Chicago. So we have two more minutes, so I'll just continue. And, uh, but as you can see how it's, it's really cool to glaze with the white and then almost opposite of what you would do in airbrush. You can, you, you can go light over dark in airbrush. I mean in pastel, which you can't do in airbrush. You can, but you, you have to know about all that stuff. So it's a lot easier to make a mistake in the airbrush world than the pastel world. Have a great night, Mr. Brad. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, Nameless, these are just an hour. But I think it's great we can meet up and, you know, hang out and so, you know, we go over a few techniques, which is good, and then hopefully you can go ahead and try them on your own, you know? I know it's Saturday and, you know, a lot going, a lot going on, especially with uh, the holiday weekend here in the United States. So, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, parades, all that fun stuff. Fireworks, some places. Have a great night, Mr. Johns. It's so glad you're feeling better. That is so cool. And Rick, it's great to see you too. So I'm so glad you're here. And uh, if I and Colette, of course, great to see you. And so this was a really fun uh, live stream. So I think next week we're going to start a new project. And that's going to be fun. I'm going to finish her off. And so that is, I'll uh, finish her off, off camera. So I hope everyone has a great holiday weekend. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. And stay tuned. I'm going to have a video, a regular video coming out on 
on lighting. So that's going to be exciting. So take care.